Welcome, everyone. You're listening to Technology Insights for Visionaries, a podcast based on real experience of software engineers and business analysts from MobyDev. For 10 years in the market, MobyDev has successfully delivered more than 400 software projects to customers all over the globe. To learn more about the company, visit mobydev.biz. Today, we're going to talk about web development. Do you know what Tinder, Airbnb, Pokemon Go, and Pinterest have in common? All of them run on the Kubernetes platform. Why should you evaluate using this technology? How can it help businesses? And what circumstances should it not be used in? First, let us define what Kubernetes is. Hi, everyone. Kubernetes is an open source platform developed by Google that was first rolled out in 2015 and then gradually became loved by developers working on different platforms. It allows users to coordinate and run containerized applications over a series of multiple devices or machines. Kubernetes aims to ensure total control of the entire lifecycle of a containerized application, with methods providing improved availability and scalability. Kubernetes users are able to manage how their applications interact with other applications outside of the Kubernetes platform and govern how and when these applications run. Product owners can easily scale down or up as needs require, can roll out updates seamlessly, and can test features and troubleshoot difficult deployments by switching traffic between multiple versions of the applications. And what is the difference between Kubernetes and Docker? Frequently, discussions about Kubernetes and Docker will take the form of, should I choose to use Kubernetes or Docker? But this is a slightly misleading framing. As these two platforms are not strict alternatives, it's absolutely possible to run Kubernetes without Docker and vice versa. But Docker frequently can benefit from concurrent use of Kubernetes. And the same goes the other way. Docker is all about containers and is frequently used to help with the containerization of applications. Docker can be installed on any machine as a standalone for running containerized apps. Core of containerization is the concept of running an application in a way that isolates it completely from the other elements of the system. In fact, the application acts as though it had its own instance of the operating system, even though in most cases multiple containers are on the same operating system. Docker acts as the manager for this process, handling the creation and running of these containers within a given operating system. Now, imagine you're using Docker on multiple hosts. This is where Kubernetes can come into the picture. Each host, or node, can either be virtual machines or physical servers. Kubernetes is able to automate and manage elements like load balancing, scaling, and security, and the provisioning of containers, linking all of these hosts through a single dashboard or command line. We refer to a collection of Docker hosts or any group of nodes as a Kubernetes cluster. But why would it be necessary to create more than one host or node? That's a very good question. There are two primary reasons for it. First, to make your application scalable. If the workload on the application goes up, you're able to create more containers or increase the number of nodes within the Kubernetes cluster. Second, to increase the robustness of the infrastructure. Even if any node or individual subset of nodes goes offline, your application remains online. Kubernetes is able to automate the removing, adding, managing, and updating of containers. In fact, Kubernetes is like a platform for orchestrating containers. Meanwhile, Docker allows for the creation and maintenance of containers to begin with, at a lower level. Thanks for bringing the difference. Now let's answer the main questions. When and why to use Kubernetes? Beginning with a series of Docker-created containers, Kubernetes manages the traffic and allocates resources for this service. It makes numerous aspects of managing a service-oriented application infrastructure simpler and easier. In conjunction with the latest tools for continuous integration and deployment, Kubernetes can scale these applications without requiring a major engineering project. We can take a look at a few of these cases more closely. With pleasure. The first case is container orchestration. Containers in a vacuum are wonderful, providing a simple way to bundle and deploy your services with a lightweight creation process. This allows for positive attributes like efficient use of resources, immutability, and process isolation. But when you're actually implementing your project in production, it's very possible that you'll end up dealing with anywhere from dozens to thousands of containers, especially over time. If this work is done manually, it's likely to require a dedicated container management team to update, connect, manage, and deploy these containers. 
Simply running the containers is not sufficient. You'll also need to be able to accomplish several things, like scaling either down or up in line with changes in demand, orchestrating and integrating various modular parts, communicating across clusters, and ensuring your containers are fault tolerant. It's natural to think that containers should be able to handle all that without the need for a platform like Kubernetes. But in reality, containers themselves operate at a lower level. To benefit from a system built with containers, it's necessary to use tools that sit on top of and manage the containers. An example of such a container orchestrator is Kubernetes. Another case is management of microservices. The concept of microservices is far from a new idea. Software architects have worked at breaking up large-scale applications into broadly reusable components for decades. Microservices offer greater resilience. They are faster and more flexible in the deployment. Eventually, automatic testing could be done much more efficient. Microservices also let decision makers choose the best tool for any individual task. One piece of your application may benefit more from the productivity boost of a high-level language like PHP, while another piece may get more from a high-speed language like Go. But how does Kubernetes fit in with this microservices concept? Let me explain. It's true that breaking down your large-scale application into these smaller, less rigidly connected microservices will allow for more freedom and independence of action but it's still necessary for your team to coordinate while making use of the infrastructure all these independent pieces use to run. It will be necessary to predict the amount of resources these pieces will need, as well as how your requirements shift under load. You'll need to allocate partitions within your infrastructure for your various microservices and restrict resource use accordingly. This is where Kubernetes is able to help. By offering a common framework that gives a description for your infrastructure architecture, Kubernetes allows you to inspect and work through resource usage and sharing issues. So if you're planning on creating a microservice-reliant architecture, Kubernetes can be massively beneficial. And one more case to describe the use of Kubernetes is cloud environmental management. It's no wonder that containers and the tools that manage containers have become increasingly popular. As many modern businesses are shifting toward microservice-based models, such models allow to split an application into discrete pieces portioned off into containers, run via separate cloud environments. This allows you to choose a host that perfectly suits your needs in each case. Kubernetes is designed to be deployed anywhere, meaning you can use it on a private cloud, a public cloud, or a hybrid cloud. This allows you to connect with your users no matter where they're located, with increased security as an added boon. So, Kubernetes is a fit for the cases you've mentioned. What about the cases when Kubernetes is not a way to go? Well, we need to keep in mind that Kubernetes was created to solve a certain set of potential issues and challenges. If you're not actually facing those challenges, it's very possible that Kubernetes will be more unwieldy than helpful. To put it short, Kubernetes is not the best choice for simple or small-scale projects, as it is fairly expensive and too complicated. It's not a fit for projects that feature a tiny user base, low load, uncomplicated architecture, and no plans to increase any of that. And it's definitely not something you need if you're developing an MVP version. For the latter case, it's better to begin with something smaller and less complex, such as Docker Swarm. Then, after you've solidified a vision of how your app runs, you can think about switching to Kubernetes. What about enterprise companies using Kubernetes in 2021? The Cloud Native Survey, which polls technology software organizations, reports that the use of containers in productions has increased by 84%. From the previous year, up to 92%. Use of Kubernetes is up 78% from the previous year, reaching 83%. Wow, that's impressive. Maybe you can come up with examples of any well-known companies running on Kubernetes? Well, you remember Pokemon Go? A mobile game where you need to catch Pokemon characters using the real-world locations. It worked on Google Container Engine using Kubernetes, allowing it to orchestrate a container cluster that spans the entire globe. This let its team focus more efficiently on putting out live changes for their active player base of more than 20 million daily users. Also, Tinder made the transition from their legacy services to Kubernetes, a cluster made up of more than 1,000 nodes and 200 services, with 15,000 pods and 48,000 containers. This reduced waiting time for EC2 server instances from multiple minutes down to seconds, delivering significant reductions in cost. What's your experience applying Kubernetes, and was it effective? At MobyDev, we have quite a lot of projects running on the Kubernetes platform. One is a point-of-sale software and venue management system 
adopted by quite a big number of bars and restaurants, over time, a huge amount of historical sales data accumulated. So we came up with an idea to apply artificial intelligence algorithms to find patterns in the previous sales and make predictions for the next period for each venue. This way, we developed an AI-based demand forecasting system and integrated it into the main system as an independent module. As AI computations required significant resources, we initially used virtual machines in the Amazon Elastic MapReduce cloud service. The more venues that adopted the system, the more expensive the infrastructure became. The AI module's high central processing unit load occurred overnight when machine learning algorithms were processing the daily sales data and were idle during the day. We implemented Docker Swarm to decrease infrastructure costs and manually manage computing resources. At the MVP development stage, it didn't make sense to use Kubernetes, just because there was a lack of time for adoption. But as the number of venues were supposed to grow, we needed a new approach to data engineering. Our goal was to provide automation and scalability, along with cost optimization. Kubernetes allowed to enable historical data gathering scripts on scheduled basis and run AI scripts after successful historical data update. We built an AI dashboard which shows results of the AI scripts and an API that interacts with the AI dashboard and a data storage and database runs inside of Kubernetes. In terms of business, Kubernetes allowed us to implement auto-scaling and provided real-time computing resources optimization. Another real-world business use case for Kubernetes that Movidev was involved in is a smart computing resource auto-scaling for a face-blurring feature in a video surveillance system. The system consists of several applications and an AI-based core for face blurring. Kubernetes is used as an orchestrator for all of these applications. When a new request to process video appear, backend auto scales with the help of Kubernetes API and automatically adds more workers to process the requests. You can learn more about Kubernetes use cases at MobyDev website, mobydev.biz. As we've learned, Kubernetes distributed architecture and scalability pair well with machine learning and artificial intelligence. As these technologies continue to mature, 2021 seems to be the year to watch for growth in this space. Absolutely. Kubernetes has the capability to accelerate the application development through solutions built with a cloud-native ecosystem, at the same time allowing malleable use of applications and data so that a company can succeed through the modernization of its platforms and apps. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode and invite you to join MobyDev on Facebook and Twitter. See you there.